Welcome to the next session during the Innovate to Build event. This session is related to the roadmap for, of advanced design. It means plans for the development of advanced design in a close future. Before we start, just a few words about me. The main, my name is Mateusz Budziński. I'm a product line manager for Structural Analysis Software at Vertex. I'm located in Poland, in my city, Kraków. I started my career at Robobat more than 25 years ago as a technical support engineer for Robot. Now it's Autodesk Robot. Next, I became a product manager in the R&D department. When Robobat became part of Gretek, I joined the Gretek development team as a technical product manager. And for the last two years, I'm working as the product line manager so in short, uh, I care of the development of the structural analysis software in the great group's portfolio. When it comes to my educational background, I'm a structural engineer with a specialization in on numerical methods. That's all about me, but to begin with uh, a very important slide today, I will present to you the development plans for pattern design especially for this year. However, these are just only plans and you cannot have any assurance that the presented novelties will appear in the upcoming version. So this is the nature of the software development. Some options uh, are sometimes excluded from the version, even for a few days before the release, mainly with the quality reasons. Why plans for future options can always change. That's the agenda, uh, short agenda. We have four points. I will start with explaining strategic goals, then I will explain the timeline, and then I will deep dive on roadmap. And the last part will be related to the questions. What are the main messages for the upcoming and the next version of advanced design? For the 2025 release, I selected four main goals. The first, the first is the improvement to user inter experience. Uh, means we want that your work with advanced design is more efficient, so to increase your productivity. So that function is for that uh, group of for for that goal. Um, the second goal is to increase the modeling capabilities. So to provide new functionalities that let you create model faster and also model uh, more advanced objects. The next objective is related to users' uh, needs from selected countries. So it includes smaller or bigger user requests, sometimes specific uh, for a given market. And the next goal is to increase design capabilities of advanced design. So improvements and extensions of design functionalities you are using for verifications according to structural standards, still in version concrete elements. Mm. And on this slide, for each of such four categories, I selected three examples of planned novelties and improvements. Now, I will just mention such later, I will explain more. So for uh, user experience improvements, uh, we will increase the performance in Timber design also on the RC slab module. We will provide new method of flow distribution and also possibility to visualize it, to see foundation on the 3D model. For modeling um, capabilities, yes you will be able to edit the stiffnesses of planar uh, elements. You will be able to define elements with data grid also to define the geometry of solar structures uh, using new uh, quick uh, model. When it comes to the local needs, uh, there are several improvements related to the climatic loads, uh, some new functionalities related to the system management. Also, we plan to release this year composite steel beams design. 
uh, but this will be released in the update 5.1. And for other design capabilities, yes, there are improvements. I selected three. Mm, one related to the timber tapered beams, the second related to the steel uh, co uh, cold form sections, new types of that sections, and finally, for masonry walls, we will be able to define a verify confined and reinforced and masonry. I will come back to details in a while, but first a few words about the goals for the next 2026 release. Some goals are the same, but we want also focus more on increasing numerical capabilities and uh, building sore cooperations. What are the topics you want to cover? I selected some, for example, for um, the first group, we want to improve mechanism for reports and also provide new options for post-processing. For numerical capabilities, we want to provide possibility to model layered shells and orthotropic slabs. For building soil cooperation, it means for me, uh, we provide pile foundations and also we plan to expand the functionalities modeling um, for structure ground uh, for better structure ground interactions and for design capabilities the main plans are related to the design of timber cross laminated uh, elements to be able to do check uh, for shared punching on ends of walls also for RC column to do a verification for cracks for that columns. Of course, they are just selected points. Uh, but we, before we go into details, um, shortly about the timeline. Yes, so there are the, the previous 24.1 uh, release, the last one was released in October. The next one, 2025 release, is planned for June this year. Next uh, on October this year, we plan to release 25.1 update. And of course, 2026 release is planned in the, the next year, also on May, June. That's the, let's say, clean uh, timeline for, for releases. Yes, now it's time to go a little bit more in details when it comes to the roadmap. I will use for this a special uh, way for displaying. So uh, I will use a special way, as I said, the functionalities I group by functionality on, so that's of, on the advanced design. So like, I group by modeling, uh, calculations, post processing. So groups of advanced design or components of advanced design. And I group them in three main uh, categories. Functionalities that are in work, so I hope everything will be re ready for 2025 release. Next, some functionalities that are planned for uh, the October 25.1 release, but also uh, functionalities that are planned for the next big one uh, version for the next year, 2026. And the third group, there are other options that are under consideration. <clears throat> It means options that some of them we also include in 2026 release. So I will explain it that later. We'll start with modeling functionalities for 2025. I will start with small ones. So we'll provide, for example, functionality for graphic definition of planar elements by using two points. So easy defining uh, walls or slabs or load areas just using two points to define a rectangular shape. Another small improvement that is planned for this release is an option to convert planar elements into load area in, and also in an opposite way. It's helpful especially when we import model, for example, from Revit. So that functionality will be helpful on that. Another improvement, small improvement, but nice, related to the system management. So ability to sort elements from a system. We'll be able to sort element by ID, by different categories. So 
so to make a um, correct order of elements. The next improvement related to modeling uh, is related to the um, data grid tables. So the tables with, uh, for example, as we see in the picture, linear elements, we are on the new, new version, we are able to define, to add new elements to that tables. And what is more important and nice, we are able to import, export and import um, content of that tables using Excel. What will be the benefit? In fact, we will be able to define the geometry on Excel and import and import it to the table. So in fact, we, we are able to model the geometries using Excel. Another improvement, novelty related to geometric generation, a new tool for quick modeling of typical structures for solar panels. So in case of structures like uh, support tables used for solar farms or carports on parking places, you will be able to define the geometry much easier, faster. So thanks to a new set of, uh, let's say macros, geometry macros, you will be able to define the geometry much faster and easier. Another improvement, small improvement related to model uh, for snow generation according to Eurocode, it will be possible to take into account the elements preventing the slide of snow that are located on the roof. The, it has some influence on the values flows from snow. For the calculation part, what are the novelties planned for the calculation? I will start with possibility for editing stiffness of planar elements by using factors. So in case planar elements you want to take into consideration the geometrical autotropy. It means that for some directions, for example, the bending stiffness is different than in another direction. For example, due to the um, uh, cracks or due to those different geometry shapes, you will be able to define, change stiffnesses on different directions. It can be done, it will be possible by two modes, at the basic one, it means we will be able to define uh, just coefficients per type of stiffness, or for some advanced, more advanced users, it will be possible to define, to change coefficients for elements of, on the stiffness matrix. Another improvement, another new functionality is related to modeling. It means calculations of loads that are distributed from load areas. In case you define the, for example, planar load on the load area, and you, during the calculation phase, that loads are converted into linear loads on beams located below the load area, we invented another new approach. It's called FEM approach that gives much better and more realistic distribution of loads. Of course, details we'll provide later during, when we pre present the version. Now, today, I will just, I'm just highlighting uh, novelties. For, for post-processing, we provide some new functionalities directly on, on the ribbon, so it will be easier to select, to change some uh, display settings for results. Also, for tables, uh, there is a new nice functionality because on tables with results, you will be able to select easily maximum, minimum values. So to easily find using the tables, the extreme values of different uh, forces, for example, internal forces for linear elements, as you see on the screen. For steel design, very nice improvement is related to cold form sections, new, new set of cold form sections. That cold form sections uh, will be able to define parametrically. And there are sections like C, if it means the C section with the slanted top fringe, sections with double folded edges, and finally, different kind of double sections, so double sigma, or double CE, front to front or back to back, so in different configurations of geometry. What is important, we will be able to model that sections, but also to do the verifications uh, according to Eurocode. 
and when it comes to steel elements, in case you want to see more details results on some areas, you will be able to select now uh, the um, on the shape sheet dialog, you will be able to select the mesh node. It means that for each selected mesh node, we'll be able to see detailed results, not only the general results for the whole element with the maximum values, but also detailed results for each, each mesh node. For concrete, for concrete, I think the one improvement which is possibility for editing modules for reinforcing steel, maybe it's not impressive when it comes to the, the name, but in fact, it allows you to model composite reinforcement bars. One of the part of improvements related to the concrete design is to increase the speed of design calculation for planar elements, according to Eurocode. For timber design, for timber design, uh, we select three, I selected three points. The first one is the timber design for tapered beams, according to Eurocode 5. So verifications for special part of Eurocode of that kind of elements is included now. Possibility to optimize timber elements by using systems. It means in case you group timber elements in system, you will be able to easily optimize the, uh, that elements using the systems. And finally, for timber, we reduce the calculation time of design uh, verification calculations for timber according to Eurocode. I would say it's more or less three times faster now than it was in the previous versions. It's nice, it will be much easier and faster to do such calculations for timber elements. Another smaller improvements, for example, quick display on ID of linear elements or values for loads directly from the right click menu. Configuration of keyboard shortcuts, so you will be able to first check, uh, second to change or assign new uh, keyboard shortcuts for functionalities using the um, dedicated dialog. Also, possibility to, to see the geometry of foundation on the 3D model. So you will see the real shape of the foundation and what is nice in case, for example, you export that foundation to FC's footing module, do the verification, optimization, and when you go back, all that um, shapes will be visible as a, you know, as the real from the calculation for the optimization because updated geometries, or updated values will be sent back to, to the models, are sent back to the models. So thanks to this, the, the geometry you see on the screen are the real ones. When it comes to RC modules, design modules, there are several improvements on the left and the right. For example, for drawings or RCB module, we, we will be able to define the sections on drawings, not necessarily on, on the span, but also on the support. For continuous footing, we will be able to do the preliminary sizing, taking into account also the eccentricity um, between the, the wall and the left and the right side of the continuous footing. And for RC slab module, there are two improvements. The first one is, again, performance, improvement to the, the performance. So in case you have big models with many loads, with many results, with many finite elements, it will be not a problem at all because the speed of the work, the speed of the reinforcement generation zone generations will be much faster. It's really nice improvement. And the second change related to the RC slab module is the automatic tip generation using the American code rules. What does it mean that generation of strips now will include several rules from the code? It means uh, that the width of each strip on each span could be different depending on the geometry of that span and surrounding elements. For Mazonry 1 module, we implemented confined Mazonry so that 
Mazonal walls when the concrete part columns are on on sides of that wall. Also, the verification of the reinforcement of the masonry wall itself. So that verifications are included now on the masonry wall module. For steel connection module, there are two big uh, changes. The first one for the widest truss cube connection, we implemented drawings. So now drawings are implemented using new technology, new, new method. It means it will be better, more, let's say, detailed. The previous version, we had no drawings for the uh, welded truss tube connections. And when it comes to that welded tube uh, connections, we'll also provide a possibility for defining the um, reinforce plates that reinforce the, the cord. It can be defined as horizontal or lateral, as you see on that screen. And the final point I want to mention for uh, this release, we will provide the online helps in local languages. That are the plans for this 2025 release. What about the next releases? I will start with 25.1, so October release. For this release, the biggest change is the possibility to define the model composite beams, so that's steel beams that are cooperate with that concrete slab that is made, usually is made of two parts, the steel uh, corrugated slab on the uh, sheet on the bottom and the concrete part on the top, and it's cooperation with that steel beam, uh, yes, it means that it's a composite beam then, so we'll be able to model that beams and, of course, to do a verifications according to Eurocode, and also verification according to American uh, code. So that's the plans for the 20, 25.1 when it comes to the composite. There are also different other improvements planned. For example, we want to improve reports a little bit um, to provide new type of the preview. We want to provide changes on the engine to, to read off problems with uh, bigger um, reports. Also, we want to improve post-processing options, uh, for example, by giving the possibility to display only one extreme value per element, not necessary for each mesh element. And as I mentioned earlier, the new possibility for doing the verification for new sections according to Eurocode, we want also provide that verification according to American codes. Uh, that's the plan for the 25.1. When it comes to the next big version, 26, there are different plans. I will start with big changes related to the calculations. So we want, you are able to model orthotropic planar elements uh, with layered sections. Where, when that sections are used, they are used mainly for cross laminated timber, so for CLT. Uh, elements. So we will be able to model that element and do the finite element calculation using special finite new elements. Uh, the next improvement related to the modeling and calculation is for pile foundation. So the, the plan is to, you, you are able to model pile foundation of advanced design. For modeling, there are different smaller points. I will not go too much into details in each one. For example, for we want to do a uh, um, allow to generate automatically the wind on circular uh, silos on tanks. Several new options to geometry like merging uh, elements or defining uh, work plane by selecting just an element. For timber design, I think, yes, as I said before, uh, we want to model for a finite element calculation uh, layer trails, but then the next step is to do a verification of that C element timber sealed panels using forces from that um, layered shells. For concrete design, I hope we will provide also the punching verification of end, on ends of walls. 
And there are several different smaller improvements related to the RC design uh, modules, starting with possibility to import uh, DWG drawings into the existing uh, drawings, some improvements related to the placing um, bending details bars, uh, new kind of horizontal annotations, exporting reinforcement schedules to Excel files, uh, possibility to do a verification, crack verifications for columns according to Eurocode, uh, possibility to group reinforcement drawings in a single word drawing document, so to, to export um, drawings from beams to one word document, possibility for modeling uh, different soil layers for um, levels of layers for, for Footings and also for footings, possibility to re do the reinforcement using the fabrics. As I said before, there are just plans and uh, the list is not closed. The, under the consideration that other options that we need, probably some of them will include on 2026 release. I don't want to go too much into details, I just highlight some of them. For modeling, we want to implement functionalities related to the calculating the vertical stiffness of supports using first stress distribution, then to do it in an iterative way. Uh, for geometry, maybe generator of drop panels over columns, new kind of easy management of levels, new kind of uh, geometries that are supported by the the wind generation, different improvements related to the climatic loads, also for the calculations, for example, equivalent lateral force method, uh, non-linear races on ends of linear elements, or category, new categories of geometries for composite uh, orthotropic elements, planar elements, for steel, timber, design, I think uh, the timber of complex beam roofs are interesting. Possible to define the sections for call form section using the center line and use that sections on the verification during the verifications. So as you see the different um, proposals um, also for post processing uh, like possibility to define the strip for planar elements on the 3D model. Uh, on design modules, another set of options related to either modeling or preparing the, the documentation. Mm, there are plans. There are plans. Some of them, for sure, would be included for 2026 release. I hope you are enjoying the next release. Of course, the details mm, will be presented during the dedicated webinars for the what's new on 2025. We have still a few months for that. And that's all. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for um, joining this session. Now will be the time for questions and I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much. And hello again. I hope you, you see me and hear me. Uh, if you have any questions, please use chat and I will be happy to answer them. I will check now if there are some questions. And uh, there's a question from Alex. What output to other software is available? The part one still is revving. Yes. In fact, in fact, uh, advanced design offers possibility to export the data, the model especially, <clears throat> to different modules, uh, formats, starting with like, uh, you know, the universal one yeah, like uh, IFC, but there are direct links with uh, Revit and Advanced Steel. Uh, that direct links allows for exporting not only the geometry, but also other important information. For example, for Revit, you, we can import, export and import Mm, geometry, material, internal forces from advanced design to Revit, 
if we want to use them on the for the design project uh, analysis using um, PowerPack for Revit uh, design uh, mod sub modules. So yes, uh, we can easily uh, export. If I'm not wrong, there are some classes during that um, innovate to build uh, event. There are some classes related to the Beam workflow. So I'm sure uh, you will find uh, you will see how it works. <clears throat> There was a question from Bogdan, uh, which code environment, <laughs> different environments. In fact, uh, the programming is using the Microsoft uh, ecosystem. Uh, we are using the C Sharp, C++ uh, languages. So it's a typical, let's say, uh, kind of programming. Mm. Just one comment to the presentation. The, as I said, there are plans. Some plans are changing, some are changing really fast. For example, for this release, 2025, you want to add some points that were even on the plans for 2026. For example, that small functionalities for RCB uh, module to put the drawings on the drawings, the uh, bending details over the beam, or also on improvements related to, to reports, reporting system. So the problem with, uh, let's say, some people have a problem with big files due to the many pictures on tables on the reports. So we, we, we do some, we do changes, improvements on that area and there the changes will be also available for this 2025 release, not for late, uh, 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 later versions of I hope it also helps. Mm. Please, if you have any other questions, now is the time. We have still a few minutes. On the screen, you can see a link to the website, Advanced Design website with some uh, special website with some details. So if you want to see something, or if you want to find new info, you can use this link. And I will show also another one. This uh, another one link is, uh, is for, uh, I don't know if you see that. Sorry, I, I forgot to add to the stream. So now you see the uh, link to the for downloading the uh, trial version. And and I hope I hope now I'm sharing the link to the uh, to the dedicated website. So if you can use it, then you will you will find more info. Of course, these sessions, as every other session, are will be available uh, for watching uh, later as recorded session. So then you just need to go to the find this session and click uh, to to join, and you will be able to see that session. Okay, as I don't see any other questions, I want to thank you. And have a nice day.